Being able to hear overtones in a complex sound is a skill that's potentially useful for just about every musician in every type of genre and medium I can think of, but it is especially useful for musicians working in just intonation. But it's also just a great way to better understand a sound in general if, let's say, you want to emulate a certain kind of sound with a synthesizer. So, in this case, the sound is a bass clarinet, because those have these nice, rich, odd-numbered overtones. So it might be hard to hear them at first, but I'm going to bump up the volume of a specific overtone, uh, starting with three, but we'll go to five, we'll go to seven, and uh, I'll, I'll make it obvious. And then I'll bring back the original sound uh, so you have some idea of what to listen for there. But even before that, I'll just play a quick uh, sine wave reference of the G, the third harmonic of the low C we're listening for. Did you hear that, G? The third overtone of the low C? It sounded almost like a second clarinet was playing, but I promise you that G was there the whole time, and I just amplified it. So see if you can hear it now in the original sound. Don't worry if you can't hear it right away. There's a psychoacoustic phenomenon called fusion, where our brains take these uh, mathematically ordered overtones and fuse them into a single tone, and it, it takes a little out of practice to unfuse them. And even then, you're still not gonna hear it if you're not really paying attention and if you don't really know what to listen for. But let's move on to the fifth harmonic, because that's there too, I promise you. Uh, this E. Now let's move on to the seventh. That seventh is so prominent. I wonder, can we get any higher? Can we get to nine? So to me, the 9 was much fainter than the 7. You could hear the 9 at the peak of the crescendo, maybe, but it's very different than the 7, which was there kind of the whole time. But really, let's just hear it for the clarinet. What a wonderful instrument, and what a fantastic spectral profile. So we're going to do a few more exercises. But first, I'd like to introduce the series. <laughs> And the answer is just do it, just find some way to do it. A more systematic approach for me, the first thing is ear training. The ear is everything. Without the ear, why 
bother with any of this? Why bother with a special tuning system? And that isn't to say you need some some naturally great ear to get into this, to get into GI microtonality. You might be surprised what little training can do. All right, let's move on to 11. Now 13. This one is a mixture of 13 and 5. Here's nine again. Here's seven again. Now here's the fifth. And finally, three.
Now, this is not the most traditional first step when it comes to ear training. The uh, traditional thing is to start with transcribing simple melodies, things like that, and that's actually great. It works perfectly well in complement with this, and there are also, you know, textbooks that will walk you through guided courses. I can link some of those down in the description. The main thing is, is to practice listening and to be aware of what you hear, and if you don't necessarily hear overtones in a sound, if you try it out in real life or with sounds that you like and you can't hear them, try uh, bringing the sound into a program like Audacity or Sonic Visualizer, which are free programs, and um, taking a look at it first. Don't get discouraged. You might have to turn up the volume quite a bit to hear some of the high overtones, although don't damage your hearing. You shouldn't expect too much. You're not going to be able to unfuse a complex tone like a square wave into its constituent sine waves. I mean, after all, uh, it wasn't until 1863 with Helmholtz that people even understood that sounds were made up of constituent sine waves. But musicians have known about overtones for thousands of years. I mean, the wind and string instrument makers of ancient Greece and China were well aware of this way before Pythagoras about the relationship between these simple harmonic ratios. So I'm going to do one more loop of these without my talking. But if you really want to do this right, this time, try matching the pitch of the overtones and the fundamental in whatever range is comfortable for you, with your voice, or with an instrument. And then you'll really be learning these sounds. Mm -hmm. 